Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Reichskommissariat Ukraine Lover. But we gotta talk about flame, blood, and grief. As soon as Bodan crossed the hill and saw the fires, he knew that what had happened. The hateful flames devouring that familiar patch of forest were hard to misinterpret. Nor were the fire tire tracks scouring the ash laden mud and snaking up into the distance. He nearly broke into a sprint, but he knew better. Instead, he unholstered his side and began to walk at a steady pace as it fire died down. By the time it was there, there were only cinders and skeletons of trees. He waded through the smoke, traversing the hellscape in search for the wooden bunker. He hacked phlegm into his sleeve as he choked on the smog. His foot caught on something and he wretched as he looked down on the charred face of a German trooper, his flesh chipping like bark. It brought him cold comfort that at the very least, his cell had taken a few of the rats with them. It glanced over to the bunker's entrance, the way the wood had splintered and the structured buckle, it looked like the maw of broken teeth. Looking closer, he stepped over the corpse of two partisans, too burnt to make out their identities. There was no doubt in his mind that they had two been his friends, and he was forced to shove down his grief to proceed. The inside of the bunker was much brighter, although the sun now shone through the holes where the logs and earth had given way. He counted each body he saw, and with each one, he dis the despair was harder to ignore. It all came to a head when he found his commander, the man who had taken him in and tried so hard to give him hope to his lost soul. Now it was just another body, recognizable only by his uniform. Bodan couldn't take him falling out of time as he sobbed into his arm. There was nothing in or around him but pain. Eventually he remembered where he was and stood up, blurry-eyed but purposeful. He retrieved a shovel from against the wall and dragged his commander out into a proper resting place. Then the rest until he was the last one of his cell above ground. Was he lucky or un unlucky? Down the mount. The problems facing Crane are obvious. We don't know how much food is produced by the farms. We have no idea of how many of these peasants work at these farms. Only vaguely can we explain these discrepancies with the variations of needs between the seasons. The partisan conflict has torn relations with the councils asunder, and has left many Ukrainians under our tutelage vulnerable to subversion by various groups. Georg Leibrandt had a rapt audience among the various bureaucrats and apprentices who had taken the key. He was their collective father, in a way, in the rock in which the waves of surrounding chaos could only lap impotently. His environment was of calm, cool collection, data, science, and rationality, in what seemed to be a veritable madhouse of conflicting personalities. The men who congre congregated in that stuffy meeting hall were less the bureaucrats who ran a colony, more the foot soldiers of a prophet being rewarded for good works, but the dying of their beloved leader's presence. Of course, there are very few easy solutions to these problems, as some of our critics would have our supervisors believe. We need to maintain energy, or synergy, with the various administrative arms in Ukrainian organizations. We need to exploit the natural bounties of Ukraine, not just of the soil, but the rivers and estuaries. Our economy must industrialize to meet the needs of the European community. We can only realize the vision of the late uh, Big Daddy, with the input and dedication of every administrator. We must avoid the uh, uh, siren songs of extremism, hopeless nihilism in the face of irrational rebelliousness. Within torrents of nonsense, a plan is formulated. So, um, I think it was one last time. So we were about the Kampf, expand the Kampfgruppe Olem. Dorf, please go right ahead. Uh, did I do this one too? I think I did too. I mean, I, I, I definitely read the Bolsheviks, but yeah, I definitely read this one too. So if you read this one as well, please go right ahead. But right now, um, I believe what I did previously, because there might have been a day or two in between now and, and last time, we'll get more stability, which is good. Um, that's not good to not do that. I did the experimental extraction and its methods, so just to see what happens, because the Ukrainians are going to starve a little bit, unfortunately. Um, we don't have quite everything up there by f enough. And there's not much we can do here, so I figured, you know what, we're going to try it. Why not? As the world is burning around us. And literally burning here with us. Uh, we're going to talk about our deficit, or debt, or growth, debt to GDP ratio. That doesn't exist in our world right now. Inflation is going down, so that's good. We have no stability. That's better than negative stability, I guess. As we're just letting things go on, and we're going to protect the capital as much as possible. In the meantime, Happy New Year. Happy, finally, 1963, January 1st. And we have a cup of white tea to keep us here. Uh, cool, calm, and collected. Actually, it's very warm, so maybe warm and collected. Consumption cycle, January 1st, 1962 to January 1st, 1963, total grain consumes 36. Uh, despite attempts at further mechanizing agriculture and balancing the needs and output of Ukrainian farmers, the increased productivity was nearly inadequate. The next coming start will have to redouble their efforts to ensure they meet future quotas, as the Germans have increased expectations after this close call. The current cycle's productivity and management of grain distribution have failed to meet their local needs, leaving the natives malnourished and struggling to survive. This will likely hinder grain production, make more meeting in future regional development, and export quotas extremely challenging. While regional development has met German expectations in the current cycle, it was through the skin of the administration's teeth, Ukraine is still burdened by the risk of not meeting expectations in the next cycle, which could potentially lead to future inadequate further German investment and the associated decrease in German settlement. Understood. A decrease in grain output has been recorded across the regions due to the resistance levels of each region. The national spirit named the consumption cycle will be obtained with the following effects. So we get more income and growth. You know, we could have made out worse. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, that's not good that we can't get that. That's very bad. Quite bad, actually. Hey, but that's better for poverty. Uh, anything else yet? Nope. And over here, we need 40, 31. Not good enough. I, I'd much rather focus on the resistance. Just keep, keeping them down is super important. 
See those extractions. But consider the industrials to get more growth. Break apart the hierarchy. Well, I'm gonna do this one next. Desolation not selected. Oh, well, that's good to have. Doing this one's important. So now we just lost more control. We lost more stability. And we got more stability here and helped out desolation a little more. Oh god. The ruling government does not have majority control over Volinin. The following effects are applied for every activity. Uh, we definitely attack them then. Um, that's the case. It's commonplace. Yeah, that's not looking good for us. Oh god, 61%, 94, 94, 95. So, oh, what is this? Low government control? Yeah, so we're gonna save real quick. Honestly, probably don't really need to. Whatever. We're gonna see what we can do is gonna help us out. Because we still have 44 political power, that's a good amount. To put down our enemies. And this one, desolation will fall. 79% chance that nothing will happen. Hmm. This is the one we really want to focus on. We got 5% more, that's fantastic. Thank God. But it's not good enough yet. Desolation grows up. A little more. 54% is better. Um. 6% chance for more control. I'd rather attempt it here. Oh. And only 10 more. Uh, 61, 59, 54. Go and do that for now. Now we don't have enough political power for all this stuff, which really sucks. But the development level is fine. Everything else is just not very good for us. C consider the industrialists, which I think I read last time too, but it's no secret that to many that the state's relationship to the industrialists have always been tem te tempestuous at best and outright hostile at worst. The greed knows no bounds and often interferes with political objectives, yet, given the circumstances, we cannot afford to create more internal enemies, and we need to get all the help we can get. Thus, the state will call on for every favor it has with them and provide every concession or to ensure increased production of military equipment and hardware, at least for the time being, and so ensure continued survival. Downing an iron glove, it was clear that action was demanded. Ollendorf knew very well that Le Brant and Brabtagon would be unhappy with what he was about to do, but unfortunately, the security situation reached a point where the compliance fell on deaf ears. They knew it needed to be done, and they no longer had sufficient reasons to stop risking and stopping him. Standing there before a small crowd of officers in state media, Ollendorf cleared his throat. Due to the security situation and the state of the security towards forces in the Reichskommissariat, I am officially announcing the expansion of the Kampfgruppe to so properly address the partisan threat and ensure the safety of its citizens and our soldiers. Additionally, continue the Kampfgruppe will assume several control over existing security forces and coordinate efforts to protect critical resources and infrastructure and conduct offensive operations against the partisans. I am confident the situation will stabilize in short order. It was short to the point, and after a few more words, he concluded with a Heil Hitler and departed without question. The announcement that had been a formality, as already come group of officers were assuming control over the police forces and preparing operations. Ollendorf expected that there would be some kind of retaliation from Labrant, as it was a clear challenge to his authority. Still, Ollendorf doubted he could do much about it. Brautagon was even less of a concern as the influence the foreign office had over security measures was inconsequential. The worst he'd have to fear was the man's disapproval, and that was something he could live with. He had what he needed, or it would be brought to Ukraine one way or another. So here, we get more political power, which is good. Um, defend settlers' interests. Oldendorf does. You get more stability, which is good. This one, 60. Oh, God. Control goes down. Development progress is impeded. Exploitation regresses by 2.5. You lose command power. It's just better if you can. This one get more stability. Increases control by 0.3. Advances development by 0.5. Further exploited by 0.5. More command power, which is not super important, but still. I'd rather have it than not have it, you know? Boom. Negative seven, that's... How are we losing? Are we losing weekly stability or something here? Huh. 57, it's getting worse. Good God. Oh, unleash... Oh, here we go. Compo group. So 8% chance, 5% more control. 20% chance that nothing happens. Desolation arises by 12. So what happens when desolation hits 100%? Decreases state GDP. Uh, you know, I don't, there's only a small percentage chance, and if it does go badly for us, I just want to make sure that it, I can change it for us, because, you know, we're learning here. This is the first campaign doing this. So, increases own dual support, which is fine. I don't care. I want things taken care of. It worked. Thank God. Thank God it worked. Well, you can blame the partisans for having desolation here. 
That's all I can say. Cool down. Nice. Alright. Crack down to Banatry. That worked. Good. Two more political power. The creatures are controlled by 2%, which isn't very much at all. There you go. Good. We have them under control, which is fantastic. But then we got to read about an idea. Let's get 0.33% more GDP growth. Harima sat on the porch, reclining as he considered the view in front of him. This home was a little way outside of Charkal. Close enough that he could get back into the city should the presence be required, but remote enough that he had some peace away from the hostile and bustle of urban life. Ukrainian Muse was a, r a rather flat country. It must be rather nerving to be a German here. Used to the towering forests and impenetrable Alps in their homeland, the seemingly endless plan was comforting to Harima, though reminiscent of the lowlands of Holland in which he lived as a boy. Uh, perhaps he would buy an estate in Gottenland. The warm sea air would certainly bring no small amount of comfort to his daily life. A servant uh, came to where Harima was reclining, carrying a stack of papers and reports that signaled an end to his brief moment of idle leisure. Wordlessly grabbing the reports, his face fell into a slight frown on the side of the numbers. Production values across Colony were stagnant, if not regressing. It was a death knell, one that had been sounding for quite some time now. Funding was always seemed to make its way towards agricultural subsidies or combating the rising banner threat rather than his factories, leaving them underperforming compared to the rest of the Reich. He would be meeting with the acting Orex Commissar later in the week and had prepared a report that would be sure to show him that increased funding to the colony's burgeoning industry would result in greater returns for everyone involved. Shooting the, shooing the servant away, Harima grabbed the open bottle of wine sitting on the table next to him and poured himself a glass. He raised a glass of the heavens in a salient salute, something that one might even call a prayer, a prayer to industry, a prayer to progress, and a prayer to the future of the Aryan race. He raised a glass to his lips and grimaced the wine had gone sour. Wait. What was his dissidence? We don't want that one. Still struggle here. Break apart their hierarchy. We cannot help to destroy the many partisans groupings within the state if we cannot dismantle their chain of command. Currently, we know far more about the eastern groups than with the western, and so we can split resources accordingly in order to make best use of them. Intelligent assets will be sent west to further understand and discover those exact leadership structures. In direct action, assets will be sent east to liquidate those we do know of. We'll have to convince the Sipo's leadership that this will be the best course of action, but that should not be difficult. They very much enjoy the job, after all. So, increase the support, spend a little more money. National development status in every region goes up by three, which is good. I like that one. Um, ooh, if not selected, resistance. Oh, we get more control. An insult. The obs would rather plain, better fitting neither Harima nor the man that he was scheduled to meet. It contained, to his understanding, just five objects of any note, barring the two doors that marked both the room's exit to the hallway and to the office further within. There were in order, a row of chairs upon which Harima was sitting, a desk with a little telephone behind which sat a diminutive uh, secretary paying him no heed, a small house plant seated next to the desk, a singular clock face by which he was telling the time, and a painting that broke the monotony of the beige wall that surrounded it. The painting was what Harim had been focusing on in the past few minutes, in a vain attempt to stave off madness. It was a simple thing. A landscape commissioned by some self-important bureaucrat to some self-important artist, and it did little to soothe the anger that had been building inside. He had been sitting in the small waiting room for the better part of an hour, waiting for a meeting that had been scheduled for quite some time ago. His grand entrance. Carefully arrived, or carefully planned to arrive just as the clock struck, had been stymied by the unassuming secretary sitting in front of him. Please take a seat, he said. Sanctimonious and polite, the acting Rax Tumasar will be with you shortly. Finally, a buzz broke the monotony of the ticking. With a feverish gaze, Harima watched the secretary bring the phone to his ear. Yes, he asked. He gave a wordless nod and hung up the telephone. You can go in. Stiffly, Harima shut up papers in hand and walked past the secretary with a signature smile reasserting itself on his face. He threw open the doors, ready to tell to sell his proposition he had sold hundreds of times before. The sat before him froze with a smile on his face. It wasn't Lebrant. It wasn't even someone he recognized. Just another sniveling man in an ill-fitting suit. I'm sorry for the delay, sir, but the acting Rex Commissar will be unable to make it to the meeting today. Harima turned on his heels, ramrod straight, and walked out swiftly out of the building. This insult will be remembered. Aim and infiltrate. So many threats and not enough resources. As such was the dilemma facing Stolen Kling, an officer of the Ukrainian Security Police in his time in his office. Numerous papers and reports detailing the situation facing the Rex Commissar were spread across his desk. He'd been reviewing dossiers, threat assessments, and contingency plans, all to show he made an informed decision on a heavy question. What was the biggest threat facing the Rex Commissar? Yeah. There were only three groups of real concern. There was the Ukrainian insurgent army, smaller number, but fanatical Ukrainian nationalists who clung to the long dead Bandera's dream. They were dangerous terrorists, but their minimal numbers made him wonder if it was worth the hassle. 
the UNRA was more interesting to him. They were also Ukrainian nationals who sought to create a republic and were widely viewed as a more moderate alternative to the radicalism of the UPA. As a result, they had a wider base of support, though they weren't as active and the members weren't as fanatical. There was a remnant of the Ukrainian Red Army, communists hiding in the East who survived like cockroaches they were, despite continued efforts to quash them. Killing uh, understood. Kling understood that they retained some popular support, but as for the strength, he was doubtful enough to truly threaten the Rex Commissariat. It was better to focus on resources on one of these uh, groups and spread his people too thin. He was confident that his men would be able to infiltrate and build his networks against any of these groups. He only had to give them a target. Finally, after hours of consideration, Kling knew exactly who the target would be. The UNRA? The Republicans would be mitigated. The UPA? The Banderites would be strangled. The Communists would be silenced with the URA. Well, in all honesty, the Ukrainian Red Army has always been the one that's been kind of the one bugging us the most. Special Operation Strike. Oh, God. Wow. Hey, we got this more under control, which is good. Nothing's changed here too much. 57. Um, honestly, I want to target the Communists. And if this goes poorly for us, well, we'll know. 53% is not good enough. Unleash a conflict group. Oh, that did nothing. Oh, we don't have enough support now. So to that, but who's to blame? A corrupted system. The breadbasket of the Reich, the flawless cog that feeds into Europe, is what we would probably proclaim. Our smiles is rigid and ties we desperately ignore the decaying, broken machine that is our colony's leadership. The old blood are too busy engaging in pointless hobbies, and the new blood argue about a problem and offer dozens of different wild solutions to our political system. We stare at a blue sky and argue about the semantics and what color the app blue really is. Perhaps if we can get the main players to sit down, we can reach an agreement. Not quite a peace treaty conclusion, but at least something that makes the tensions lower enough for us to settle the matter. We're all civil people after all, no one wants this discussion to become bloody. Counterinsurgency celebrations, leaning back in his office chair, Ollendorf allowed himself a slight smile at the contents of the report that lay strewn across the desk in front of him. They just described a great victory in part of the security police, one of the many in the ongoing campaign against the communists have infested the eastern regions of the country. A number of major bases, staging points, hidden cadres, and camps of other taps have been identified, located, and utterly annihilated, with the end result of drastically impeding the communist war effort in and around Charkow. In his mind, Ollendorf could see the ultimate result if only similar victories could continue to be obtained. If only the security police could continue their patterns of efficiency and success, he could see the communist menace completely crushed and their so-called people's war destroyed once and for all, all attributable, of course, solely to his own efforts, his own leadership. Yes, he could see that possible future, and he knew he'd do work to attain it. There were, of course, other reports of ongoing insurgencies elsewhere, but they would undoubtedly fall in time as well. Undoubtedly. Focus must be maintained. But who's to blame? And that being said, what even is common ground? We do not have a unified ground. The newcomers blaming all our woes upon Cox's system. A system whose veterans engorge and pawn and make sure it never changes to their advantage. They have the leverage but lack the momentum and the rival rousing the new generation has. An immovable wall meets an unstoppable object and until we find a unified enemy, we'll only be left to watch fireworks. So right now, where are we at? We're doing alright. We need 60 here, which we should be able to get, actually. Ah, uh, where's this one? Increased growth. I actually have liquid reserves. Um, all in dwarf support. Nah, we're good. So now, this is looking way better here, right? 60, 23%, 76%. Looking good. Command power. Oh, god dang it. Desolation. Ah, nearly 100%. Good god. Raid the bases. 68% good. 53% is kind of concerning here. So... Just gotta keep an eye on that. Ah, oh, that's looking so much better. Also, I didn't realize this, and this is finally the third episode. There's an action button down here. So, you can get more political power, but Germani will want two more things grain, which we don't have at all. Uh, we get more guns for political power, or we can lose 100 political power and lower our grain needs, but lower our stability by 10% and change the control of what we have here, which actually I should have taken beforehand. That would have been much smarter for us to do, but oh well. Against betrayal. Afyal's project in the Ukraine is in grave danger. It is, is assaulted from the flanks by bandits, from the front by Bolsheviks, and from the rear by cowardice, our greatest enemy. What has been a lot of the problem in German Ukraine? We hide in barracks behind walls, only managing a rifle conquest by the rifles of hail patrols. Is this even our country? Did German men not fight for the right to hold it in our own hands, to farm it, form it, and raise future generations above, above it? They did, and we do. But every death blow is restricted. We hear the chitterings of the traitorous Ukrainians as our administrators tear us away from the victories, chastising us for destroying the enemy. Those men do not rule, they merely administer. They are bribers, placators at heart, those men in Kiev. If only Germani knew the extent of their wrongdoing, their falsifications, their lies and obfuscations. Only yesterday, 15 farmers were executed in raids. Thousands of dutied peasants have fled their lords. Crime, petty, and grand has increased tenfold in only the last few months. Illegal border crossings between the German government and our western frontiers have become common and unmanageable. 
What has been the response of the Kiev administration? Enablement. A sickening capitulation to the demands of obviously compromised local leaders. Shum and journalists, men who have been connected to the OUN menace, have been allowed to write pithy and trite denunciations of partisan violence in the state papers. I promise you, Germans of the Ukraine, that my single purpose in the coming months shall be the destruction of the Judeo Bolshevism, the scattering of Western bandits, and the complete reformation of the bureaucracy in Kiev. These shall be led away. The traitors shall be hung, and the covenant shall be decimated. Men of honor, integrity, and dedication shall be the only men allowed to even glance at my office. Otto Ollendorf, speech to the officers of the Chernigov region. No more slaughter of settlers. The rot grows within. Walk the eggshells. Orthodoxy kills. Ooh, this doesn't seem like the best one. Uh, I'm not sure which one we want. The rock grows within. Mm. Walk the eggshells. Factionalism with the grows. Well, I don't know. I kind of want to see what this one's like. Orthodoxy kills. There is a vision for a purified Ukraine, but it shall have to wait. The security situation is nearing untenable. It cannot be denied that the current racial policy, informed by ide ideology and enforced with all the tools available, has united the general public against us. We must concede compromise and offer concessions in order to win them back. That's, of course, required negotiation with some of the administration's hardliners, but they can be won over, after all, when the bandits are weak and the security situation pat or rectified, the po policies can always return. Yeah. Yeah. Ukraine's director. Ooh, happy May, everybody. Hmm. So we have Brautigam, Wagner, and Nolendorf. But not really Wagner. Colonial exploitator, huh? Ollendorf. Oh. If you want to understand Ollendorf, you must know about how much he's willing to do to see his project implemented. All the party's functionaries learned quickly to internalize an acceptance of violence, but Ollendorf ex executed their violence. And as time heading the Einsatzgruppe D, he saw some 100,000 subhumans shot and shoved in unmarked graves. He has seen the calculus of Nazi bureaucrat made real, and he did not blink. It's not the goal of his career, his dream work would be heading an economic ministry in Germania, yet despite his obvious credentials. Time and time again, his brutal, on brutal honesty and stubborn attitude have gotten him branded unhelpful and sent to the East. Perhaps he was always too honest, too comfortable with presenting the reality of the national socialism to make headway in Germania, but those realities don't give him true pause. They only give him a chance to make things more efficient, more streamlined, and here in Ukraine he may find an opportunity to make those changes. So that's what we do with the rotten is indeed, but inside. Hans Otto Brautigam. Hans Otto Brautigam is a young man with big dreams and a lot of proof, despite receiving his position after just a bit of nepotism from his uncle. Hans Otto has not become complacent like other young men given cushy jobs by their family and elite. Behind a facade of adhering to national socialist ideology, Brautigam dreams of a few new free Germany in a new free Europe. He wonders if his dream, moving on from national socialist tyranny and building future freedom, is even possible. He wonders if it's even possible to make things right. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But that won't stop Brautigam from trying to do the right thing and make Ukraine a better place, even if he has to sacrifice his great ambitions. That seems like a walk in the eggshells. I could be wrong about this, too. Orthodoxy kills. What do we got here? If not selected, that's fine with us. If not selected, ah, no money. It's pretty normal. We're always broke. Oh, please is lower to them. And Ollendorf for three of these things. That's not good. Yeah, it's that time again. My bad. Because I want LeBron to do it. And if we have to use Khan's commands for it, so be it. Um, we need more uh, command power for this. Or we could wait and get this one. Special Operations. Because I do want to make sure LeBron has this. LeBron. Um, 38%. The unavoidable. Lockdown strangleholds. Brautigams in the bureaucracy. More of everything all the same. All the time. 
Time to steal oneself. Another attack again? A representative brought the gum, you may speak. Thank you, Minister. Dear members of the Security Council, I'd like to begin my speech with a brief overview of the incident which happened just yesterday in the Tarkashkesi region. That day, a major bandit raid occurred, resulting in the death of 19 British soldiers, 7 officers, and 8 high ranking officials. We all must remember their sacrifice in the name of the Vatalan. In the name of the Vatalan, of course. It is insane to think that the unjust treatment of the entire nations became a sacrifice in the name of my country. Young German men now die here. And if I didn't choose, it is even more insane to think, however, that the majority here in this room aren't willing to do anything about it despite claiming to care about our brave soldiers and brothers. Can't they see that it's impossible to simply extinguish the will of the people to be free, as Olendorf believes? Or expect that they will obediently accept oppression as Lebron hopes? The right way, the only way, is to allow the Slavs to join us in a quest to rebuild and heal this land. I will make sure that we follow that way. We must. This, I believe, has just come as a result of the absence of real reforms, which should have been implemented, at least partially, by the Security Council. Lead anti rock sentiments among the local populace and the Rock's Commissary grow. Only meaningful, true, or fruitful reforms can ensure that one of our fears greatest conquests remains stable. Hope that my concerns will be heard. Thank you. It's a shame, really, that not even every, that not everyone can see the truth. Swallow your prides next. The unavoidable. Every, Europe, uh, Korean stores disaster. It's not just us. Every facet of the Rock has struggled in the wake of our three sickness. Muscovine's death has been set in motion. Polish dissidents appear ready to spill over at any moment. Germany may soon fall prey to its own Darwinistic excesses, yet even if all of them make miraculous recoveries, one thing is clear, none of them are going to save us. We must free ourselves from our delusions. A great battle is coming, and our goal, our only goal, is to make sure we survive. It's a subtle shift in policy, yet all wants a seismic change. No longer can we imagine a rosy future where the criminal class of Ukraine succumbs to reason. Pirates and surround us, our only goal is to stomp them down until they have no more strength to fight. Yeah, we're going to have a blue water navy. That's how we're going to roll here. Ollendorf is pretty popular, eh? Ollendorf. LeBron uh, barely has any support there. Uh, I'm not sure how much is super important to have. Peralta comes over oh, the bureaucracy, huh? We get 10% more Peralta gun, that'll hurt LeBron a little bit. We'll see. What's this? Target Peter. Peter van Norden is bent down to the fields around his home, a rifle shaking in his hands. The wind was blowing hard. And stalks of the grain blew in and out of his view. He stared down at the barrel of the gun and took a shot at the haystack. It was past the haystack and into the forest beyond, a bad shot. A murder of the crows burst from the foliage. Peter began to speak, his hands still firmly pressed around the rifle. My aim is weak today. My skills have dulled since the war, Antonia. The partisan threat is yield. I need to hone my skills once more. Do not distract me. Antonia bent towards her husband, frowning. Peter, this land is unsafe. Without Cock and Hitler to maintain the Ukrainians. They're forming armies. The council is considering evacuating the entire region. You must know that your rifle already cannot save this farm. You could be the best shot in Ukraine, and the cell couldn't. Finally, Peter's eyes give a slight glance towards his wife, as if a flouse fly. Antonia, that is enough, he said coldly. This is far beyond your station. A Verbauer is a settler, an Aryan individual with the will to move mountains. I can do all that the Reich requires, or I will deserve nothing. His feet shifted in the muddy dirt below him. He turned towards his target and fired off another shot. He missed once more. A man has a duty. Swallow your pride. Brought the gun could feel his eyes rolling back into his head as he approached the finish line of another hard day's work. He would have grabbed his coat. Maybe he could still get six hours of sleep if he went home now. It wasn't meant to be, however. His three thuds came, uh, heard, uh, could be heard on the other side of the door before a distinctive Dutchman entered his office. Brought the gun would need to talk. The German could feel the de desperation on Harima without even having to look at his face. Wrapped the sleeplessness that had his beat. You may not like it, but we both have a common predicament. The political landscape is slowly moving underneath our feet, and soon to sweep us off our feet. We both need a sport. So why are you here coming to me? It is be it's become LeBron or Oldendorf have no use for a failed entrepreneur. What makes you think I want a scavenger like you on my side? That's what Brothegum's heart wanted to say, but his brain seemed to halt the words from leaving his mouth instead. Something more fitting for a politician came out. I understand where you're coming from. If you can convince the sellers to support me, I might be able to pack you up in the council. Harima's face first turned to a shock and then relief. I need to see the results first, of course. We will discuss this tomorrow morning. You can trust me, that's a lie. I'll have your back and you have mine. That was definitely a lie. A lie. I'll see you become Rex Commissar. LeBron and Ollendorf won't see us coming. Good night. A piece of truth must have accidentally slipped from Harima's mouth. Perhaps the gum knew that those two were full of themselves and that Harima and his men were incompatible in every way, but both went to power. So all these means justify Brotagum's ends, why not? It wasn't as if either of them had a hope in hell of a gain in power without each other. So now Barely there. Ah, oh, just for support. Brotagum. Ollendorf. Still up there. And LeBron, LeBron, Brodigan, Brodigan. Cause 
But we're out to go and get more bureaucracy. So we've got to wait until we see what happens. Police, actually, we might be able to get the police too. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, three. The police. Well, we're going to go with more of these guys because we need more change here, anyways. Well, the sea is pretty good overall. So with 29 command power, it's never enough. Uh, 0.84 is really just not enough, is it? 5% chance. Uh, Desolation Falls. Yeah. 77. This is not going too bad. This is getting worse though, unfortunately. 54. Here's what we got to do here. Which sucks. That didn't happen to fire. Um, yeah, that really sucks. Rubies in the rough. In defiance of his legs protest, Bodan pressed on through the fields. The pain in his stomach far outweighed the bad in his limbs even after hours of walking and burying friends. The full moon provided its gentle silver glow, painting the wheat gray. The light glinted off its grain silos and warehouses, turning them into frosted silhouettes. He noted a dormant tractor. He passed many of that day. The countryside was all tools, no people, and plastered with the names of German companies. A tractor was saved from this fate and to make it showing. It predated the occupation. He found the solitary family farm in these corporate plains. Had he found it? His aching stomach twisted like a vice. A family farm meant a farmhouse. A farmhouse meant a garden. And a garden meant real food rather than just endless grain. He moved further up the road, spotting a home. As house fell when he reached a German sign at the end of the property. Bodom turned, clutching his fists. He had to find another garden. Looking around, he still only saw storehouses. He faced the house again, noting the tomato vines and ways into the perimeter. His gut churned, spurring his feet into action as he inched forward. He crawled through the farm like a pest. His heart pounding. Eventually, he found a clutch of r ruby red tomatoes and shoved them giddily into his pockets. Then a light flicked on inside. He saw the shadow of a man with a rifle and immediately stood up, breaking into an agonizing sprint. A flashlight cut through the dark, just missing Bodan as he tumbled over a short fence, sprawling flat on his stomach in the mud. Recovering as quickly as he could, he scrambled through the grass until the windows were dark again. He fell into his back and kicked thoroughly with muck. His breath quiet as he stared at the ink black sky, waiting for the stars to stop spinning. Gingerly, he retrieved a surprisingly pristine tomato from his coat. Sherman took a bite of the best tomato he ever tasted. Perhaps he was lucky after all, and poison in the air. But I assume a sorry will soon fall apart. This is a direct result of the absence of reforms and changes to the system. With every month, the number of parts and tax on military and civilian infrastructure increases. The only wise decision is to expand the garrison's budget dramatically, or drastically. The amount of the grain sent to the right declines, resulting less than help from coming from Germania. We must act now if we want to succeed in realizing our dear fear dream for the eastern lands. These are the type of talks you can hear daily in the halls of the Kiev administrative buildings. Recently, the situation in Ukraine became less and less manageable, resulting in rising discontent among officials and rumors regarding inefficient governing. But some even suggesting the soon collapse of the Reichs Commissariat. out. Along with that, infighting across various factions of the German government in Ukraine has also seen a dramatic increase, leading to a more heated power struggle within the colony. While the concerns may be overreaction to controllable problems, it's an undeniable fact that the stability of the Nazi rule over the Ukraine becomes much, much weaker. Now, the current state of things shall not be changed shortly. The prospects of the Reichs Commissar can worsen drastically. End of the report on security status in Reichs Commissar Ukraine. Well, that's not good. Dial up the other Brautagam. The Reich has abandoned us. It's their fault to frame the cruel cruelty of their leaders so bluntly, but it's truth we must accept. The lines of munitions ran thinner and thinner by the day, dropping below even our dimmest projections of what they can offer. While we can't ascertain the reasoning, we can still we are certain that their meager offerings will soon not be enough to stem the tide. However, men on the inside might be able to propel us a little further. Hans Otto Brutigum's uncle is actually a respected diplomat in Germania. While armaments are certainly not at his department, he might be able to pull Phil's strings and get us a little more. It won't be much, but it'll be a lifeline. At this point, we'll take what we can get. As LeBron is not even a leading here. Oldendorf is definitely leading here. Uh, he definitely has the police on his side. Over here, um, what, what we chose, what is this? Among the police, that's fine, we get more war support. Um, this one, some 50-ish, roughly 50 days. We get 5% more, technically it will be 10% more support amongst bureaucracy and Ollendorf's. Um, so 10% more for the bureaucracy for us will hopefully put us above Ollendorf. And this one will reduce Ollendorf's support by 10% with the industrialists. So his support will go down, it's not gonna help us out that much, but. We'll see what happens with that one. I'd like to do this one, but we can't. It's unfortunate. Uh, last calls. Ukraine must be now be exhausted. Uh, black markets can be called up. Muscovy smuggling rings can be activated. Whatever we need, whatever we can. We must ring a government draw for connections, for wealth, and for ideas. Anything that gets us another gun, another bullet is worth it. Nothing is too small, nothing is too risky. We're deep within a pit, and we'll pull in as many guns as, uh, with us as our fingers can reach. We're long past shovels. The only way we can escape is if the fil hole fills with blood. 
Call for help. Um, I'm okay with this one because it increases Brotsgum support, which will lower Golden Door support too. So, Hans Otto Brotsgum felt the drops of sweat coming down his spine as he grabbed his phone because, after all, his career depended on what the call was about to make. A call to his uncle in Germania. It was true that the Rex Commissar was in a rather difficult situation, so calling for help would only be a smart before without it. All his efforts to change Ukraine would be useless. As he started to dial up the number, he just prayed that there would be something other than silence on the other end of the line. Around a week later, he was talking through the halls of one of the administrative buildings, in Kiev on a cozy evening. He was again thinking about his current position. The call didn't change much, of course. Some, did, some help did arrive. It was only to take on assistance, just as the needed minimum. It wasn't enough to improve the Rex Commissar, but the right amount to stay afloat. It was an achievement, no, but it was better than nothing. Other than some aid from the met Metropole, a call had other more productive results for the past few days. The negotiations between Baratikam and other administrators have been going surprisingly smoothly. Even the most stubborn of officials were willing to work out deals with them. Of course, Baratikam wasn't an idiot. He quickly realized that all the call had made him more respected, after all. It's nice to see someone who actually does work, right? Just as he was thinking about that, we decided to stop by a big window, from which a spectacular view of Kiev opened up. He loved that place for some reason. It meant something special to him, and stopping by every time he was in the building felt like a must, especially on evenings like this one. Then, to his pleasant surprise, he noticed something new. Keith's lights became slightly brighter. We have a cup of coffee here, too. Take more, no matter the cost. A survival of the state is the only important task left of the Rex Commissariat. The welfare of Apocalypse will surely be ruined by an all-out civil war. Whatever we drain from them is far less than what Bolsheviks or eluded extremists will do if given the chance, thus we shall take. The conflict group will cross the nation. By any material to force into a war machine, many powerful men will be angry, furious even, but there are a few options left. Let, des let desolation fall a little bit. What is this? Um, support among the industrialists. Ooh. I don't want to increase the support. Nope, not today. What is this one? Empower loyal collaborators. Collaborators increases. Um, increases LeBron support by 5%. But it's only for 60 days. Honestly, we're not... Are we, going to, we would be able to get to there, but decrease the Brotagum support for the police goes down too. If we can get, so, okay. Increase support. We are banking on this one. We'll see if that actually happens. We don't want this one, definitely. We lose tempers of war support. Uh, you know what? Screw it. We're going to do this one, anyways. It gives worse. War support decreases Olin Dorfs and Brothercom's bureaucracy support. Decrease, decrease, decrease Lebron's. So the comms include uh, asking if we all play the Echoes of the East mod. Eventually, keep asking me about that and eventually I'll get there. Uh, someone says, no, why Lebron's? Still having this playthrough though. Looking forward to the other playthroughs too. Me too. What is this? Support among collaborationists, 2%. Uh, that's okay with us. Yeah. I'm okay with that. This one, more stability. Nope. Cherry's dead. The farmhouse was sat for Bodan sore eyes, uh, as well as a sore arm, sore stomach, and sore legs, and sore back. The tomatoes. Divided as they have been, had lasted much more than a few hours before his gut was, was pleading him to find something more substantial. He felt it was in luck, however, as the warehouses and cells began to give way to humble, if not somewhat desolate, homes. Most importantly, they seemed to be Ukrainian homes, from the occasional sign on the side of the road, so Bodan approached the one before him in hopes of charity. He took a deep breath, as if he were preparing to plead his case to the Reaper. He tried to make himself presentable, but there wasn't much he could do. Every inch of him was muddy, bloody, or grass-stained. He resolved to try to pat his wild hair down and cut button his coat, although in the process he realized the few had come off, then wrapped his bruised knuckles against the door. He started powder for several seconds, and he brushed his hair back once again. Slowly the door crept open, and the bespeckled face of an old man emerged. Yes, he asked in a soft yet defeated tone. His left eyebrow arched as he observed the state of the ex-partisan. It occurred to Bodan. That he hadn't even thought of what to say. Hunger clouded his mind as he stumbled over his next words. Good afternoon, sir. I've been walking for he paused several days. My home was burned in a German raid. I have no food for a place to sleep. I'm sorry, young man, but we barely need to spare for ourselves, the aging man replied. Please, I could work on your farm. I can sleep outside. He pleaded as the man began to close the door. Please don't. Boy down scrambled for some half hearted appeal to the nationalism that he simply didn't have. We had to stick together. Suddenly the word felt colder for Bodan as the door fell shut for Ukraine. On to the next. Oh. Political power. One single spark. There was a spark in the atmosphere that Hanya hadn't felt in a very long time. At any other point, Danilo would tell her she was just being jittery, but everything was different now. Everyone had heard about Poland, and everyone knew what that meant. The atmosphere everywhere was charged. Fear and uncertainty. In the eyes of the Germans, excitement and hope in the eyes of everyone else. All Ukraine was holding their breath, waiting to see what would happen next. You know what this means, she told Danilo over breakfast. If Germany has lost control of Poland, if their stranglehold is broken there, then their power is broken, and then they know it. 
She could not but feel excitement spilling out of her voice, emotions long suppressed rising to the surface. Us and Ukraine, even Muscovy, and they're afraid that it might be over. If there ever was a time where I could fall, she trod off as if finishing the sense would somehow prevent this manifestation. There was still hesitance, a fear that this would end in doomed futility, and this hope wasn't an illusion. Yet the expression on her husband's face was almost serene, and without a hint of uncertainty, he smiled. It's 1917 again, he finally said, his voice musing. Even if it ends the same as before, I don't think there's a better year to repeat. Terence cannot be unchallenged forever. She strongly agreed and hoped that the Poland was the first domino that would send the German Empire crashing down. And if it fell, perhaps something better could finally rise in its place. Throughout the rest of the day, her smile never faded. The faint embers of hope could have been fanned, and soon they might grow into an inferno. I keep forgetting about this too, resistance stuff. Um, I don't want to spend any more political power, but still. All indoor support. Oh. Lockdown strongholds. Strongholds. Oh, look at that. Loose support in Chernigov and increase control in Kiev, which we're honestly okay with. Mm, dang it. God dang it. Crackdown Advantage didn't work. Uh, let's read about last calls. Uh, we did read about last calls, and then. And then uh, more of everything, all the same, all the time. It may be true that there are some comes with a limit of what we can take. We've squeezed all we can out of Germany, and may simply have no more to give. Luckily, our creativity is an asset with no such limitations. If we do not get our firepower through smuggling or stealing, then it shall come from us, our own hands and our own factories. We'll build these things with whatever we can manage and whoever we can find. Temporary weapon production studios will be placed across whatever territory we might find some control, open to build enough supplies before a German boot comes to crash them. Even as we exhaust the last of our supplies, we'll have a way of getting more. Desolation increases. That's all right with us. More of everything all the time. Ehor felt a crack uh, of pain in his shoulders as he hacked up another hunk of metal to feed the abomination before him. The assembly line, barely visible in the poor lighting of the factory, and Ehor's, Ehor Ehor's blurry vision was like the gnashing maw of a steel giant devouring material and sweat and spitting out bullets. The giant roared in heavy clangs and agonized groans and metallic grinding its breath reeked of blood and cinders. Ehor stopped to hold back his aching shoulder, biting his dry cracking lips. Hey, back to work. Barked the foreman from a catwalk unseen, Ehor complied with grit and rotten teeth. This has to be a numbers error, muttered the superior or supervisor from his desk chair in his office nestled safely in the far corner of the building. He was looking over the newest letter from the higher-ups. No, sir, I called the officers. They really want a 50% increase, replied the aide standing before the supervisor's desk. Eeyore loaded another hunk of metal, and his grunts of pain is coming out scratching from his blisteringly dry throat. He tried to make sense of the time, which blurred together like a fevered nightmare, and pleaded to God voicelessly that he could have his nightly sip of water soon. That's impossible. We're working well beyond our means. This place will start falling apart. On whose authority? I bet they're just trying to intimidate us. That's it. Ran a sup supervisor in a factory room. The foreman was checking the time for when he'd deal, uh, deal out the workers' paltry rations. Yes, yes, sir, murmured the aide, as if he was afraid the very word would summon them. The supervisor paled as if he had, uh, if he had though. Somewhere on the line, a dehydrated worker named Ehor collapsed in a heap. Tell the foreman no breaks until rations, or rations until quota is met. High time to steal oneself. It's all ends tomorrow. The conclusion of the Polisian Guard's fight is one last battle, struggle for life and death that may spell the end for the Ukrainian people. There's no more planning left, nor really even organizing. The operation's over, the battle will begin now. And so we'll steal ourselves. We'll look over our work and see that it is complete. We'll see our army standing calm in sturdy lockstep. We see our weapons. Oh, I'll look at that. Um, piled as high as we may need. We see our allies all standing on our side, cowering with all sorts of sordid devils. We'll see the cards we've been dealt, and we can at last understand the odds of our survival. In this moment, it seems we may have a chance. Last calls. So now, we, this belongs to Brauta Gump, but I did do this one. Increase the support for the collaborations for here. So, give us one more day, and we're there we go. So now, it's all owned by Lebrant, which is what we wanted. And happy October. Things really won't go bad in the month of October, right? Don't worry about the, anything else. Yeah. There you go, 99%. 90%, that's pretty good overall. Development, huh? 31. Well, we have political power for it. There you go, 32. Not bad. Even more. Time to steal oneself, though. Oh, Otto Oldendorf took slow, steady steps as he inspected the soldiers of the one of the Reichskommissariat's finest SS units. The men were tall, strong, and fit. Their weapons were in good condition. Uh, there were no unnecessary emotions, only a sense of loyalty and dedication. Everything seemed perfect, yet something was unsettling Ollendorf. It wasn't about the combatants, rather, there was a sense of fear. He never allowed fear to take control, but now it was almost overpowering, and now without reason. 
I would have felt that something significant was approaching, something big and didn't know what that would be. He despised when he couldn't predict something that was coming next, as it left him with only silent prayers to himself, not something he trusted much. Jörg Leibnick, or Leibrandt, crossed out another phone number on his list. He called each high-ranking officer, official, and businessman, anyone willing to talk. The Rex Commissar, day by day, was displaying more signs of instability and chaos. And Leibrandt needed all the men and all the help to salvage the system from collapsing, of course. Despite all his reassurances of support deep inside, Jörg knew that it wasn't enough. The clock was ticking, time was running out, and the noose was tightening. Hans Otto Brautigam will return home after an interview with reporters from a Ukrainian newspaper loyal to the German administration. It was his first interview, and surprisingly, it went quite well. The reason that he had never participated in such press engagements, even though the newspaper had always been loyal to the regime, was simple. Why bother? In this land, the rule was forced and bureaucracy. However, times have changed, the price of people's support drastically increased. Brautigam only hoped that it was for the best. It's coming down. As now, we're without a focus tree. Oh, God. That's fine. Um, I already spent all the political power anyway, so, oh well. Overall, we're doing okay. You know, even though things are not great for us, resistance is not bad. It really is not too bad for us. Desolation's 100%. Nice. We're gonna get what we want here by this point. It doesn't really matter. Because Hitler's dead. I like this, the GUI mechanics. That's actually really good. Actually, we could get more grain, but can we even feed the? We can't even feed the Germans fully. That's not good. But hello. Well, we'll see what happens. Paying down the debt? Yeah, of course we are. And actually, poverty got slightly better as time went on, which is really weird. Yeah, culture's getting better. Oh, and here we go. Oh, the German Civil War. So, where does it leave us now? Hitler's dead, and Hitler killed himself. Franco-Bunyan War, the Ausland War is going to fire very soon. Hot of saving. Happy November, everybody. A cop had teen proclamation, huh? Is that new? Is he doing stuff? No, oh, an oligarchy, eh? Yep. So, if Austin has problems, we're going to have problems, too. It's... Beniolan conflict, militia armies, everlasting American presence. Yeah, that's right. La Mulatarocrati. So, we collapsed yet? Ah, convocation denied. The solution was simple. Uh, obvious, evident, and yet clearly a decision would not be made. No response was coming. Georg Labranc simply could not believe it. Could not believe the stupidity that such inaction implied. Ukraine was disintegrating. It was obvious to any intelligent observer, untrained or not. And the implications of that disintegration should be allowed to occur were staggering. Economically, militarily, and most importantly in Labranc's eyes, ideologically. Ukraine was a proof of concept. It could not be allowed to fall. Yet, that is precisely what is about to see happen. Yet, send his missive to Germania, carefully worded and well supported by exhaustive empirical evidence as to why he should, without delay, be appointed Rax Komosar in order, of course, to save off the coming darkness, but no reply had been forthcoming. What had been forthcoming had been reports from all over Ukraine of banned uprisings and the wholesale slaughter of settler communities, of disappearing equipment, deserting auxiliaries, and demoralized garrison forces, of disorder, of a betting systematic collapse. Things were getting much worse more quickly than anyone else but he could see, and he had to act to correct it before the experiment of Ukraine entire, uh, failed entirely. He sent the message again, there's no answer. What shall come of this? Oh no! Whatever are we gonna do? I know what we can do. We can raise taxes. Oh, we can't raise taxes. Donbass Blitz. At first, the administrators in Kiev thought it was a temporary communications outage. Infrastructure as a whole across Ukraine was deplorable, and telephone lines were always cut by the partisans and then replaced in turn. Then the first motorcycle rider, frantic with energy, reached the city. He spoke of a general uprising far larger than any possible ban attack that was overwhelming the entire Donbass. They had already overtaken the original headquarters in Vosnitz. He said he only just escaped. It was at first discounted. Such was patently impossible, of course. The bandits didn't have the organization or numbers to accomplish such a feat. What then? 
Other reports arrived of massive revolts, attacks, and ambushes elsewhere in Ukraine. Of entire units being overrun or simply never reporting at all. No inquiries of Ossinets were returned, no messengers returned to either. Some attempts were made to control this knowledge, but much such was simply impossible, and so the panic spread. All in the administration knew what the bands would do to them. They knew where they had to get out, efforts at a response were thus further weakened by internal dysfunction. The storm was coming, it was clear, and the picture became more dire. Pleas for assistance traveled westward. Would they be answered, though? Civil war is now inevitable. Can we prevent the civil war? That'd be kind of cool. Respite. Bodan ripped his head back into the creek. His cold water stung, but there was a relief in the pain. He pulled his head free and watched the muck and blood downstream, or slip downstream. The feeling of cleanliness was liberating, but he could still not help the worry that there was a gun train at his back. He began moving to a tree where he had laid his coat to dry. As he began to wipe his face with his sleeve, birds, tree, birds fled the trees to the glade at the sound of rumbling engines. He hunched down, hoping the sparse con canopy above him and the slope of the hill beyond the stream would shield him. His hand crept towards his pistol at his hip. The roar grew louder, heavier, and fiercer. Between the branches and over the hill, Bodan saw a military truck grinding down the road, festooned with a macabre herald of the Reich. The sight alone was enough for him to draw his whip and free and press himself against the boulder. The pounding of his heart joined the cacophony of mechanical noise, and for minutes he listened. He hazarded a glance beyond the rock, allowing himself to stand to his full height and see more than a dozen trucks and armored cars were on the move. He knew it was quite the public enemy, but surely they weren't saying that much against a fugitive. His question was answered as he passed him by the same way they would the rest of the countryside. He fell back behind the stone, mortal fear receding in the face of confusion. He let the noise fade before slipping out, inching towards the house. He went as he left safety and came into full view of the road. A few hundred feet ahead was the last of the largest Wehrmacht convoy seen in years, moving with urgency towards the horizon. He breathed a sigh of cautious relief and slid back down, pulling, putting his way his gun. He knew that his hands were shaking. The only thing that shocked him more than his moment, one he spent years preparing for, was that he had no idea what to do. War had finally come. Ah, that was a eh? A ruthless calculation. Oh, it also garrison's about to break. We believe the Bolshevik agitation led to a peasant revolt. Our men can't hold for much longer. Lviv is dealing with overwhelming international insurgencies, attacks on an unseen scale. Uh, the Frank reports. Uh, we're fired at Oldendorf at machine gun pace, yet his cold and pensive stare remained. The SS officers among them lacked the Prussian demeanor. They are frightened and young, unable to hold their own, blown here and there by the gusts of change. So they turned to him, a problem solver. Grouds of gum and Lebron. May preach reform and practice their base politicking, but they never had put a bullet in it to a communist once their lives. And his men continued to look at them expectantly. Oldendorf rose to deliver his verdict. We are already stretched to the brink from him. Tell the garrison to hold out until we can re reinforce positions, but... Ollendorf tapped Kiev's spot on the map as if it were his hidden claws. Our attention must be focused on the core. Let's just succumb to opportunistic operas of revolution. If we lose that, then we'll lose our most critical administrative base, leaving our men to be picked off like flies. The faces among the officers were mixed. Some could only mourn the inevitable losses their detachments would suffer. Some were just relieved to have the hard choice made for them. But a lingering question remained, what now? Consolidate our control over the center. If anyone dares to make a move in Kiev, put them in the dirt. Twenty years of work has gone into maintaining our Lieben's realm. If it fa falls... The shame will follow us and all of our families in the grave, even if we survived. Now get to it. Ah, 18 combo with, not bad. Decent, very decent. Look at all the political power we have now. Hey, look at that war sport too, holy crap. Volninja ablaze. Yesterday, contact with uh, Altersburg and Helvald. Hagewald was lost. Despite our best efforts, it had not been reestablished with only a few frenzied telegrams coming from various HIA organizations and garrisons stationed on the border, with the general government being delivered to Kiev. The general commissar of the region had fled. His whereabouts are currently unknown. What we do know is fairly basic. Various UPA bandit units have seized villages in the northwest and proclaimed a Ukrainian state. This declaration, which was broadcast on hijacked radio to much of the Ukraine, was mostly a reiteration of the banderite version from 1941, with a few references to the tyranny of Germany and the looming threat of Bolshevism. These new rebels have been exceptionally brutal to the scattered settlements and displeased at Hale garrisons. They have come across, slaughtering hundreds and sending thousands of fleeing west through the embattled general government to a vain hope of safety in Germany or east towards us in an uncertain future. Abandoned military units seem to be made up of hardened guerrillas who recently defected as Shuma. They lack major ordnance, but do contain enough manpower to pose a significant threat to our operations in the, e in the West. Defense operations by more organized hair units have yielded some successes in scattering probing attacks directly on our border, and by, by and large, there have been no stopping the advance. Local opinion of the matter seems to be mixed. Bolshevik presence in the air has always been sparse, but it's enough to provide a large something of a fifth column to the Banderites. Locals have never exactly taken kindly to the bandits and reacted with, by and large, with apathy towards the recent uprising. While a few popular actions the Banderites had have been taken. More, mere redistributions of lamb. The red and black fl flag uh, flies once more. We have more pressing matters than to do with them. The westward line is cut. Ah, the revolts continue to spread, utterly overwhelming what loyal administrators still remain in Kiev. The latest was perhaps the most horrifying for both what entailed regarding assistance and military potential, both. For now, both Brest and Poldela had been gone silent. 
When news of such arrived at the capital, those informed the respondents in shock. Uprisings in the east and south were terrible, yes, but they could be in time to be suppressed in the west, however. All knew instantly that the severing of the train and road links to Germania meant that reinforcements, if they were to come at all, would be blocked. Supplies would be interdicted. And nobody thought to spoke the words. All the same, that escape was almost, almost impossible. Worst of all were scattered reports that Olenblin had actually defected to the bandits, taking both breast itself, a rail hub crucial beyond all measure, and the local police with them. If such was true, the administrators knew, then how could the reliability of any other units be countered upon? What are their own guards of the forces run keep itself? As the reports became more clear and the Ukraine continued to disintegrate, their thoughts grew only more desperate. What will they do to me? Is there truly no escape? As Austin awesome is burning, too. Oh. Muscovy hasn't collapsed either yet. Ah, oh, cool, Norway. Ah, the UK has fallen apart too. Oh, there goes Muscovy. Oh, it's literally just anarchy now. That's really cool. Hope's dash. The military clerk lazily headed up. Uh, Props set up with one hand while he drummed the desk with the other, producing a tone-deaf mimicry of a song from his youth. His youth wasn't far away, being such a young man for his great uniform. His age was a primary reason he was stuck here, listening intently at a radio that he hadn't made a peep in weeks. Or hadn't made a peep in weeks. He took it to humming tunes, mentally composing letters and compounding cracks in the wall, all while pretending he was listening for words from Vosnitz. Such boredom felt grimly out of place in such a tense situation, but he figured both being bored was better than the unending stress he'd been consumed by previously, just wondering about what tears were going on in the Donbass. The radio stuttered a faltering static hiss. A low voice was straining to break through the veil, but was so far unsuccessful. His heart leaped, leaped, shocked back into reality by the noise and lifted by reckless optimism. Nearly getting out of his seat, he opted to stay and listen while calling for superiors. A ga quickly, a gaggle of Reich's commissary officers and administrators had gathered around. The chill of the room did little to stop the sweat developing on many of their faces, which were still etched with cautious smiles or uncertain grimaces. Each heart in the room sunk when the static finally settled and the voice on the other end of the radio began to speak. People, Ukraine, a new era is upon us. As many of you have surely heard, control of Donbass, and as of the last few weeks, Kharkiv has been lost by our occupiers. Communication has gone dark, let there be no question, now is why they have lost. The revolution has come, and the Ukrainian so Socialist Soviet Republic has been reborn. We hereby declare to be a legitimate and sole government of the motherland, and the revolution will continue until the fascists and traitors are driven out, as they have been from Donbass and Kharkiv. This message will repeat until taken down, or new information rears its head. Glory to the revolution, people of Ukraine, the time is now, the revolution has begun. So when do we collapse? Oh, they're here now. Transnistria war, huh? Shumitsky's here. Long March East, since the Shumitskyites. Party of many stripes. Ukrainian workers and peasants army. Holy crap. Ukrainian civil war. Revolutionary inertia. Oh god. And they have their own sector too, huh? And then you have Transnistria government. The Tig Tigina Accords, Smochina's Agitation, Ethnic Turbulence, I love Ethnic Turbulence, Land of Contradictions, Battle Lines, reports were now filling out, spilling out faster than the Rex Commissar's could, staff could read them, but they all presented the same image of a worsening situation growing wildly out of control. The violence in Bolinia had spread far and wide across the rest of Ukraine, with many a city and town in such anarchy, that the authorities were requesting military intervention to break off the riots, unfortunately for them. The military was occupied and got nothing but the dregs, even as the fire rose higher in the west, and said troop convoys travel with stilted haste towards Bolinia. What once had been an intelligence black hole was now the undisputed territory of the UPA whose troops were emerging to meet the growing response. Sources told that they had been pushed from Lolinia to Shitomir, painting the gray lands with flame and blood before long. The rioting populace was under the control and communication lines had gone silent, abruptly ending a death rattle of urgent cries for help that cannot be adequately answered. In the burning cities in Ikor Silk's fields, battle lines were forming. From the lowliest soldier digging into the mud to the general scanning reports, they all knew this was turning from an insurgency into a civil war. Refugees crossed these lines despite the scorched fields and the cracked roads, patrolled by hateful soldiers or roadblocked by bitter steel and sandbag walls. The growing volume and frequency of gunfire did little to deter them, Ukrainian or German. Neither army was making much distinction in their drive to form a front line before the situation could escalate. The most determined and shaken, emigrants were Germans, who reported only further violence in their tales of the fall of Hedewald, Hegewald, colony to the UPA. They painted a grim picture of the fate of the colony, both haunted tales of violence, and the dead and mutilated they brought with them. These stories only breathed more panic into the entire of Ukraine, and in turn more violence. Ukrainian state is here. By Klaichkivsky. Interesting, he got a lot of extra attack. Dispirited, deranged, Domboy. Atrophied Azdaya. Scars the second struggle. Um, Brothers of War. Interesting. Ukrainian Civil War, of course, like everyone else. 
and then revolutionary inertia. Um, I'm I'm not sure about this. What I'm thinking right now uh, is when I play the other routes. There's different routes for Ukraine, obviously. Um, I might just start well off with the civil war. Maybe it, it depends if we can get stories about the other groups here. Failures compounding are starting to come undone, and all the mistakes, miscalculations, and mismanagement were now coming to a head. LeBron quickly seethed in his office as he read one of the reports from the Sachs papers, documents, and memos that had been gathered only in the past few hours detailing the catastroph catastrophe that was building, a catastrophe that he had now to manage. A Republic of Ukraine was now officially declared by Yuri Horlis and the Taras Bolba Borovets. LeBron slipped curled upwards and discussed the so-called Ukrainian National Revolutionary Army. A pompous title would clearly be more effective and possessed more influence than anticipated, more than it should be possible for any petty partisans. Oldeblem, like a snake he was, had wasted no time in pledging his support of the Republican government. No doubt, and also securing his position in a future regime. The Republican forces had already mobilized and seized Venetia after some brief fighting, leaving the self declared Republic with a fairly large chunk of territory and support. LeBron now considered the situation in the Reichs Commissariat was in now. It was bad in the resolution, but a determined swift and decisive measure on his part. The fact was that across Ukraine, they had lost significant authority. Beyond most of the large cities and rural settler regions, they might as well have no presence. A problematic situation, but the cities were the most important. So long as they controlled those, they could eventually destroy these insurgencies, though they could achieve that with the forces at their disposal was a question he was less confident on. The position was fragile unless there was no room for error and no time to waste. The fate of the Reichs Commissariat in Ukraine is at stake, was at stake, will forever be at stake. Oh, look at this guy, Hortlis, the Black Raven. Foreign supply bases, not yet perished. Brothers War, uh, Ukrainian Civil War, Revolutionary Inertia. I don't know anything about the Civil War, so the fields burn. The great blue sky of Ukraine is stained by smoke, fed by the fires that consume its golden fields. Villages have disappeared, and their names still exist in ink upon map maps in the headquarters of partisan here general. But the real living counterparts have been stuffed up by a match and bullet. What's left now said tersely, intensely. Nervously awaiting the day when the fire shall visit them, Ukraine's people were released from the jails and ran and strode and crawled onto a battlefield. What is left to those who were promised a frontier and trod upon an ancient and most definitely inhabited land? Nothing but a thin, tepid road back to the lands of their ancestors. Staying in the promise, staying in the promised land will not bring salvation, and the road from it will not be peppered with ma manna. Those remaining who have weapons will not build the same colony, no matter how many termites they pick one by one from the rotten Hitlerian uh, mansion. New flags fly, or perhaps old ones merely awaken new disciples. Will victory come to them? Only time shall tell, and destiny shall decide. Our people have spent so much time under a boom may only yet trade it for another, but at the very least it will be not be a foreign one. The only disagreement is a simple one. Who will devour the carcass? These newly free men may enjoy it, for soon the cold reality shall set in. They shall starve, and they shall die, they shall wish they were dead. Yet for some, they shall, they, they shall only make the final goal even more compelling. Only one thing is clear, there is no going back. Okay, so this is how the Civil War is going to fire, huh? So they actually got Kharkiv as well, unfortunately, and then we have the entire front here to deal with. That's interesting. Um, the depth of decay. The fear of death has generated shockwaves of instability across the Reich and its hard-won conquest, and our administration has been no exception. Mismanagement, incompetence, and treason have brought the Reich's come to its knees. Bandits run rampant across the colony under the banners of the old communist state. The mad mongrels of the EPA are the rats of the Ukrainian National Revolutionary Army, traitors to even their own cause. This must not stand. The future of the Aryan race in the East and its conquest the future of a very own living drum. Depends on no one but us. It is not a time for reflection or moderation or weakness. The Slav once more learned of those place or we shall perish. Consumed by degeneracy, the Rex of has fallen to chaos. We must restore order no matter the cost. And let's read one more. Let's see what else we have around here. Recoup our forces. Removed is... Oh, shnikes. Our left line cut. Yeah, we all want this one. Our commanders have been no contingency plan had predicted the sheer volume of the bands assailing us, and as such, our men are dispersed across the countryside. As the uprising of the 50s showed, these isolated detachments are vulnerable to bandit assaults, and already many units have broken contact. Captured, destroyed, or worse, defected, no one knows, but we cannot win a war like this. Concentrate in large formations, our troops will crush any force the bands can muster. We must do so as swiftly as possible. The Wehrmacht has not known nothing but victory in the East for 20 years, and that will not change here. So we have any options here? Ah. A situation in the Ukraine worsens. Food has become scarce. As fields are burned, and traditional supply chains are cut off in the chaos of war. Our soldiers must forage the land for food, taking from the locals whatever small territory we might command. If the food runs out, then the harvest is depleted. We we'll have no ch chance of continuing our efforts. Remaining 1,000, weekly decay. Weekly grain consumption will increase by 5 every 0 out of 30 days. Conserve? Oh, what does this mean? Focus on conserving your grain stock, but prolong the exhaustion period, for this is war of attrition, not one of power. Oh, God. Feed the soldiers. Well, prior to the soldiers fighting in the front lines to recover or see the required grain, is obvious a strong arm will lead us to victory in the war. Feed the people. The people are the backbone of the state, keeping them happy and winning their sports. The most crucial part of the winning the war that we found ourselves in. Supplies will be delivered to feed the people. What are generic actions? Seize civilian supplies. Increase grain supply by 15. Token rations. 
redirect supplies towards the military. Food for service. Yeah, that's not bad. Propaganda campaign. I like that one too. Reorganize industry for military purposes. Hey, you get that too. Faction specific actions. Haggle with industrialists. Well, which we can read next time, but I think I'll end it here because we've done, I'd say, quite well so far. But now we have a war to figure out, and I'm going to make sure that when we start the Civil War, um, obviously our units are probably not going to be great. We have disjointed forces, which is god awful. Oh my god. Um, um, but yeah, we'll see what we can do next. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we actually do the Civil War in Ukraine. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.